previously on WandaVision. If Wanda is the problem, she has to be our solution. Are you here to help us? I will fix this, Agnes, I promise. Oh, God! I hear that in my head. He's in trouble. What's going on, moviegoers? If you're new to the channel, my name is Krishna. Welcome to Sea World Productions. WandaVision, episode seven, breaking the fourth wall. If you guys have not seen the latest episode of WandaVision, I advise you, please go check it out, then come back to my channel, and let's talk some huge, heavy spoilers for WandaVision. Now, this episode wasn't a banger episode like the recent episodes have been. Doesn't mean I didn't like this episode, because by the end of this episode, it leaves a WTF. What the f is happening moment. So, talking spoilers, you guys. Right off the bat, I want to talk about the biggest reveal. A character reveal. Now, if you read the comics and you kind of knew what was happening and you knew Agnes, the nosy neighbor, you kind of already knew who she was. You kind of knew that she wasn't the person that she was leading on to be. She is Agatha Harkness, which she reveals at the end of this episode to Wanda in her creepy, evil, dead type, hocus pocus, Salem witchcraft basement. I got some real scary vibes when Wanda entered her house at the end of this episode. I was just like, I like the tone of this. This feels really dark. I need some of this more of this dark thriller type psychological MCU. I love that tone. It felt really natural and i was like well let's expand on this shit moving forward in the mcu don't run away from what we just experienced in this last episode because i really really liked it but yes agnes has revealed her true identity to be Agne agatha harkness the witch yes she's been a witch this entire time she's probably been a witch for centuries upon centuries she's very powerful and wanda has no idea what she's getting herself into. Now, essentially in the comic books, Agatha serves so, sort of as a mentor to Wanda. She helps her out, the old chaos magic. Chaos magic. Ooh, chaos magic. That little book in the basement, I have a feeling that will unlock some kind of chaos magic within Wanda. And when she releases that chaos magic, y'all, it's going to be on a whole new ball game. We're going to have to call up Dr. Stephen Strange. Hey, hey, Stephen. Yeah, we're going to need some help. Some help. Yeah, absolutely. It's the chaos magic. And then Dr. Strange is going to appear and then it's going to get bonkers. Because we all know that WandaVision leads into Spider-Man 3 and Dr. Strange into Multiverse of Madness. Dr. Strange makes an appearance sometime in WandaVision. Possibly the next two episodes. Uh, I'd hope so. Um, and then Spider-Man 3, Doctor Strange will make an appearance as well. And of course, he's going to be the lead in his own movie. But boy, oh boy, you guys, this episode was really bonkers. And Wanda is struggling with her mind. She's struggling to control things. Things are changing. And she seems off. Like, she doesn't care. Around the house, she's experiencing these, kind of, these different changes. Walls are changing. Video games are changing. You know what I mean? And she can't really control it or she doesn't have any kind of knowledge on what the hell is going on. And you you see her depression really kick in. This is the Wanda. This is the Wanda that's probably at the end of Avengers Endgame. Broken, weak, and just vulnerable. That's what it really feels like. That's the Wanda behind the curtains. Because this whole Wanda and Wanda Vision, oh hello dear, is fake. It's a prosana. It is not her. She's just putting on a show to really make her life better than what it is. She lost her brother. She lost her boyfriend twice. Twice. Tony's dead. Cap is old. Who can she trust on this, this Avengers team? Who can she trust in the world? Her parents are dead. Parents. I say parents because, well, this is what's going to happen. And you heard it here first at Sea World Productions. Okay. I know I'm going, off, I'm going off topic, but this is happening. Wanda's going to find out her adopted parents died in Sokovia. You got that right. Adopted parents. Those weren't her real parents this entire time. Who's her father? Magneto. Boom. That's my theory, and I have a feeling that's what's going to happen. If Marvel Studios was smart, they would go that route, because that would be a perfect introduction to how to introduce Magneto. 
something happening. This, you know, with the whole WandaVision thing, it's getting crazy broadcasting and he sees Wanda. He's like, my daughter needs help. Something, something's wrong. Maybe I should help. And he's complicated. Like, comp like he just, he, he doesn't know what to do. He's like, man, should, should, I, should I help her or should I not? She probably doesn't even know me. That's what I have a feeling is going to happen. But back on topic of WandaVision breaking the fourth wall. And there's a lot of breaking the fourth wall in this, this episode, you guys. A lot of breaking the fourth wall. I felt kind of like a Deadpool. You know what I mean? Because Deadpool is notorious for breaking the fourth wall. And we are getting Deadpool 3 in the MCU. Very much excited about that. What if Deadpool cameos at the end of this series? Not nah, doubt it. Not going to happen. Paul Bettany already said that. There is an appearance by a big name actor, a big name character that has yet to show up yet. So it hasn't been Evan Peters. A lot of people thought it was Evan Peters, but he debunked that. He was like, no, it's not Evan Peters. I was like, holy shit. These last two episodes are legit going to be real and massive. So I'm still waiting on that big cameo appearance from whoever it may be. But let's talk what happened in this episode, you guys. Like I said before, Agatha, Ag Agatha Harkness has now been revealed. She is out and she's come to play. And she's powerful with her purple eyes and her purple magic. And I love it. It looks like she's taking over Wanda's mind. And Wanda can't do nothing about it because she's too weak at this moment. Yo, magic. Yo, magic, I feel like, is a whole thing with, you know, the shark taking your powers away, essentially. Your magic. Mephesto? Maybe Mephesto was too weak and he's been feeding off of Wanda inside of this hex. We just don't know yet. Who's Mephesto? Al Pacino? Evan Peters? Who knows? But it's pretty interesting. Um, Billy and Tommy, what the hell happened to them? Now, some of you guys may not know that Billy and Tommy, Wiccan and Speed, are crucial to Mephesto and who he is. He's a part of their soul in the comic books. That's why Agatha wants these kids. That's why these kids aren't here. Mephesto, Agatha's possibly working with Mephesto, and he's like, we'll make you a deal. I set your ass free if you go give me those kids to get my soul out. Something along those lines. So that makes sense of why the kids are missing. But then it also doesn't make sense because the kids will kind of, they'll grow, obviously, and become a part of the Young Avengers in the MCU, Wicked and Speed. So they'll probably grow probably another 10 years, maybe eight years, be 18 to 22. That's my theory on the, you know, Wicked and Speed, Tommy and Billy. So by the end of the series, they'll be full grown adults and then, you know, ready to join the rest of the world. And they'll be out of that hex. They'll make it out of that hex. That's my theory. Um, what else? What else? Yo. The Nexus commercial. The Nexus commercial was a trip because Nexus essentially is a, it's a double meaning. Now they kind of mentioned it in Age of Ultron. Nick Fury and, you know, Tony Stark with the whole... Ultron thing, I thought that was pretty interesting, but I was like, what the hell is Nexus? So I had to do, I had to do my research on Nexus. The Nexus is a cross-dimensional gateway, which provides a pathway to any and all possible realities. This includes realities between realities. It is unknown whether it was created by some being or if it's just one, of, one place in the entire multiverse where all realities naturally intersect. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Are you telling me that Wanda's been popping Nexus pills, becoming some kind of Nexus, some kind of gateway and passageway from the multiverse? Is that how Agatha got Pietro from the X-Men universe? Spider-Man? All the multiple Spider-Man are going to be in Spider-Man 3? To you know, Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield? What the hell? I have a feeling this Nexus thing is going to be the, the bridge to... To really connecting everything and what's going to happen in Spider-Man 3 and Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. And I'm 110% with it. Absolutely love it. Now, what else? Oh, man. Monica. Let's talk Monica. So, the whole astro space type engineer she was mentioning. How it was going to be a big character. It necessarily wasn't. She calls somebody up, somebody she knew, or her mother. Her mother once knew, and they had this really nice tank, it looks like. It looks like something, you know, that was made from, you know, Pym Industries. So she suits up and kind of getting some reminiscent of some Fantastic Four type shit. I was like, okay, you know, I dig that. And she tries to go in through the hex, but it doesn't work. It's altering, you know, her, her, her fucking 
photon boat, whatever it's called, right? It's altering it. And she has to hop out. And then she tells Jimmy Woo, she's like, yo, I'm, I'm just going to go in there. He's like, no, you can't. Because what Darcy said, you know, it's changing you. Every time you go in there, something is changing your cells or, you know, something's happening to you. She goes in there and she's struggling. She makes it through. But all of a sudden she has like these blue eyes and she has these powers. And I was like, holy shit. Like, this is just the first of it. Like, she becomes Monica freaking Spectrum. Like, she legit, she becomes Spectrum, one of the most powerful MCU characters. So I'm really curious to see how they're going to develop her powers moving forward and how she's going to learn how to control and use her powers. I love the fact that she got her powers from the Hex and Wanda's, you know, whole reality thing. I thought that, I think that's such a unique and cool way. So she gets inside this hex and she encounters Wanda and she's trying, she's trying to tell Wanda, hey, Wanda, I'm, I'm coming to warn you. And Wanda's like, nah, I'm not having it. What are you doing here? I kicked your ass out. Get up out of here. She uses her powers, flings her outside. And all of a sudden, like she drops her and then her eyes turn blue and she does her superhero landing. And she was like, hey, Wanda's like, oh, wait a minute. Who are you? You know what I mean? And they have this whole moment of, you know, of talking about death and coping with it. And it looks like she was about to get to Wanda. And all of a sudden, Agnes comes out of nowhere. Come where? Come here. Come with me. Come to my house. And all of a sudden, Wanda's like, no, stay away from me. I'll hurt you. And then that's the whole, you know, Wanda going into, you know, um, Agatha's house. But that leaves Monica just randomly out and about in the neighborhood. post credit scene at the end of this episode Pietro shows up and he says, Snooper, Snooper, some shit like that. He's like, you know, he startles her. She's like, oh shit. So who necessarily is Pietro? That's what I know. That's not Quicksilver. Agatha has been playing everybody this entire time. She's been puppeting everything. So she is the key. She is the reason behind everything. When Pietro first showed up, that was Agatha. That wasn't her. That wasn't Wanda. So that's why she was so caught off guard. And she's like, who are you? You know, you, you, you look different. So I was like, holy shit, like, that, that's crazy. But man, this episode was, was really interesting. Like I said, it wasn't a big episode. It didn't really necessarily explain a whole lot. But a, we got a little bit of clarity on Agatha. And I love that. I love that aspect of it. You know, with Vision and Darcy, you know what I mean? She's telling him his backstory because he doesn't know who he is. And he's like, what's going on here? He remembers her because he was outside of the hex. And, you know, it, it was interesting. But then all of a sudden, like, Vision leaves her. And that's the last we see of Vision. But then all these things were happening because Vision couldn't get to Wanda in time because all this stupid crap was happening. So it wasn't Wanda doing that. It was definitely Agatha or Mephesto or Nightmare, whoever you want to name it. They were trying to prevent Vision to getting to Wanda. I was like, holy shit, like whoever's doing this is trying to prevent you from getting to your wife and kids because they're gone. So once Vision gets back, he's like, what's going on? Speaking of Vision, director Hayward of freaking Sword, apparently he was doing some experiments on Vision's body. That's why he wanted Vision so bad. He's doing something. So he wants Vision's body. I don't know what he's trying to recreate or what he's trying to do, but Vision is crucial to what he's trying to do outside of this damn hex. He wants him and he wants him bad, y'all. Like he legit, he wants him really bad. Um, oh shit, somebody caught this. This was, a, this was actually a good catch. So Mephesto apparently takes form of a fly in a first appearance or some shit like that. And when Wanda's inside the house, she sits down on the couch and she sees a fly. And the fly is on the curtain. And everybody was saying, like, that's Mephesto. And I was like, oh, shit, I didn't really... Okay, I like that. That's, that's not bad. That's interesting. You know what I mean? You're paying homage to the comic books, but I doubt he's going to look like a fly. Unless he looks like Jeff Goldblum's a fly. Then, god damn, that's going to be scary as shit. But all in all, I enjoyed this episode, you guys. It was fun. It was fun. We got some clarity. It wasn't the biggest episode. I'm expecting these next two episodes to be massive. Huge. Get ready because we're going full MCU in these last two episodes of WandaVision. But please, post your comments down below. Let me know what you guys thought of this episode of WandaVision. Thoughts and opinions on Agatha, Monica, and her powers. Please, post your comments down below. And thank you for taking time in today for watching Serial Productions. Peace. We out. We out.